Welcome to the Monday Monologue. And today I want to talk about having realistic expectations. And what I mean by that is I think a lot of folks, probably people that watch my channel, have been buying this Made in China tube gear and they see that as being like, oh, that's what this stuff should cost. And that's what, you know, you should have to pay for a EL34 amp or a 300B amp, those sorts of things. And I think if you look back through my videos, every one of these products that I've reviewed has had some serious design issues. And out of the box, they weren't anything close to what they were supposed to be. The only two exceptions have been the MusaShare X7, the latest Wilson 10 R8, if you can make sure that you get the newest version. They refuse to call it a Mark II, but whatever. I'm not, you know, if you call them up and ask them, is it a Mark II, they'll claim there's no such thing. Anyway, there's a total difference in the new and latest one. If you can get one of those, that seems to be a pretty decent amp, time will tell. That little Leaf Audio preamp that somebody sent me, the upgrade model, seemed like a really nice little preamp. But other than that, it's all been junk. That needed basically a, you know, you need to know how to wield a soldering iron and read schematics and be able to follow, you know, a video series to be able to turn it into something that's usable. And so if you think that like $1,500 is a reasonable price point for a really good 300B amp. A pair of these ISO Tango transformers are $950 before shipping. This amp using budget iron, this is probably $1,500 worth of parts now with inflation since I built this. It was $1,200 before COVID. And so... I mean, a good 5A or 4 new old stock rectifier, you're going to spend $100 just on that. A nice pair of 300B tubes that are just decent are going to be $350, $400. And so to think you can get the whole amplifier from somewhere for $1,500 and it's going to be a nice quality unit, that's just not going to happen. And... I think people get fooled looking at like a really pretty CNC machine chassis with some meters and, you know, it's got, you know, automotive quality paint on the surfaces of the, the cans that they use. And they got these big cans for the transformers and it all looks impressive. That's all it is. It's all just looks. And I'm not talking about just one of those brands. They're all doing that. And it's just hype. And there's so much hype in the audio world about everything. Even the cheap stuff gets hyped up to something that it's not. And there's all these YouTube influencers telling everybody, man, these things are the, the amp of the year and that sort of thing when they're just junk. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on with all that. I'm not going to get into that kind of war with these other YouTube folks. You know, they, they do what they do, and I do what I do, and I try to tell y'all like it is. And, I mean, I've kind of distilled down my whole brand into just no BS audio. And I'm just really tired of seeing people getting taken advantage of, buying stuff, and spending money on stuff, you know, with expectations that are never going to be met, that's all based off hype and nonsense. And so I really think we have to step back and have some realistic expectations about like what we can get for our high five spending dollars. And the thing that seems crazy to me is people 
you know, seem to have no problem spending three or four hundred dollars on some interconnects or some speaker cables, and then they don't want to spend good money for high quality output transformers, and they're trying to find the cheapest ones they can find. And that's just, guys, that's not being smart. This is where the sound comes from. And even like these, even though they're budget ones, they're still such a huge step above what you get in these China kits and these, you know, these cheapo amplifiers. I mean, if you can't see the output transformers, they're probably about this big. And if they've got big cans, it's because they've got a little tiny transformer inside them and they're hiding what's actually in there. And they're filling them up with a bunch of gravel so the amp's heavy so that you think you're getting something that's high quality. And I don't buy that BS about, oh, well, they use gravel because it conducts the heat better in thermal transfer. That's nonsense. These transformers do not get hot. This one does. The power transformer does. These output transformers don't get hot. You could just put a, you could put a can over these things, and they'd probably run cooler because you don't have the heat from the tube on them. That's just done so that when you pick it up, you go, wow, feel how heavy this thing is. This must be really high quality. I'm just, yeah. And I know... So people have lit me on fire about, you know, oh, you just want to trash things that are made in China. And I'm going to trash stuff that's made anywhere, that's junk. And I know some people thought I was really going after deckware. I wasn't going after them. I was just trying to figure out exactly what the product that they're selling is. And the people that were hyping it, we're making it sound like, oh yeah, this thing's got two and a half watts and you can use it with RP600M speakers or even down to 85 decibel speakers and they'll sound great. But if you actually listen to Steve, and I guarantee if you called him up and talked to him and said, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to run 90 decibels in my room with some 85 decibel efficiency speakers is this little UFO amp going to do that? He'd say, no, don't buy that. You need to get this other one. And so I'm not saying anything that he didn't. It's just I'm one of the YouTube people that are not repeating this nonsense. And then people end up with unrealistic expectations out of something that's been hyped up on the Internet as something that it's not. And... I want to do what I can to put a stop to that so that people aren't wasting their money or being disappointed with a potentially good product, but they've bought it for the wrong use case. And like this little EL34 amp that I'm going to be building, it's going to be a 3-watt amplifier with some headroom is what I'm expecting it to be. So if you need more than 3 watts, don't buy buy my amplifier because it is not going to do what you need it to do and you're not going to be happy with it and you're going to tell other people oh yeah I bought one of those and it just didn't yeah it wasn't very good well it wasn't good because you didn't understand the use case and I want to you know make sure that anybody that buys anything that I make that they have realistic expectations like I tell anybody that wants to buy one of my little EAR-834 clones. It's not going to be silent. If you hook this thing up and you turn the volume all the way up with no turntable hooked up to it or no music going through it, yeah, you're going to hear some noise. It's going to be, it's going to be some hiss, probably going to be a little bit of hum too. But at listening volume, if you have the volume knob set where you're listening to music, I guarantee there's way more surface noise on an LP than there is noise coming out of that preamp. But again, I want people to be aware of that. And if they're buying it thinking that I can plug this thing into my 100-watt amp that's hooked up to 95-decibel speakers 
and with no signal, I can turn it all the way up and it's going to be silent. It's not good. No, it's not going to be. And if that's what you're looking for, don't buy one of my preamps because you're not going to be happy with it. And that's what I mean by realistic expectations. It's the same thing with buying like higher quality interconnect cables. You're not going to get some huge giant change in performance doing that. There might be a little bit to be found there, especially if you get the good ones that are directional that have the shielding grounded on just one end. Those will possibly shield more noise. But again, don't have unrealistic expectations that these things are going to transform your system. Again, I hope that we can start working towards educating people on what a realistic expectation should be. And for example, if you're looking to buy a 300B amp that's got good tubes, good output transformers, it's got a good layout, it's well built, you're going to probably spend four grand, three grand anyway. And if you're expecting to get one with like Western Electric tubes, those tubes are $1,500. They're more than an R300 amp costs. And so, yeah, just you need to have those kind of expectations. And if you don't have the budget to buy a four or $5,000 amplifier, then understand that you've got that limitation and say, you know what, I would rather have a really nice EL34 amp and spend some money on getting some efficient speakers that'll work with that than buying some junk 300B amp just because it's got these big bottle tubes and it looks cool. Because that's all you're getting with some of those 300B amps is big bottle tubes that look cool. So anyway, I think that's kind of it for my rant today. I was going to put some music up, but actually, let me go get some music. So I do want to give a shout out to my friend Oak Mountain Man and his wife Sue. I hope y'all are doing well. Hey Sue, Dolly loves you and she misses seeing you. So let me show you what he sent me. We're doing a little music today. I can't even begin to pronounce this. What is this? I'm not going to even try, but there it is. He sent me this album. I'm not sure even where it was recorded, but this is some really cool music, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I really appreciate every once in a while he'll send me an album that he's found that he likes, and it's really fun to get these in the mail and sit down and listen to them. So thanks again for sending me this album, and maybe you can leave in the comments where people can buy this. That would be super fun. The other thing I want to share is one of my all-time favorite albums is Santana Abraxas. If you've never heard this, you need to find a copy of this. And the digital stuff sounds okay. Unfortunately, the recent pressings on vinyl of this sound terrible. They just, they're really not good at all. And the original pressings are the only thing that I've been able to find that actually sound good and of course they've gotten expensive because there weren't a ton of them and he was at Woodstock he just I mean he knocked it out of the park with this album it's got several known hits on it but it's also got some deep tracks that you may have never heard and like I said, on the original vinyl, it just sounds sublime. So this is my other recommendation for this week. If you've never heard this, I'm sure many of you have, but I'm sure there's some of you that haven't. Take a listen to this. Even go on YouTube and you can download some of the stuff to, you know, stream some of the stuff to listen to. Obviously, the YouTube stuff isn't going to sound fantastic. The one on Amazon Prime sounds okay. It's not great. Um, the CD sounds pretty good. It actually sounds better than some of the later pressings. So if you do have to like break down and get something new, I'll look and see if Amazon's got any, and I'll put a link below for you know a CD. Anyway, thought I'd throw some music out there. And again, you know, if any of y'all appreciate the channel or you want to share some cool music with me, I'm always up for 
somebody mailing me some vinyl for me to listen to and if I like it we'll showcase it on the channel so anyway you can hit me up at my email address I've got a uh, new email steffi at skookydesigns.com it's in the description below again thanks to all you patreon folks also you folks that make donations at my site or send me little gifts like the vinyl and stuff really appreciate that some of you have sent me you know some extra tubes that you had one of y'all sent me some coupling caps that you took out of your amp some mundorfs and you replaced them with something else and you know i super appreciate that because then i was able to put those in my ra and god i can't remember the guy's name that sent me those coupling caps but yeah i put them in my personal r8 and they do sound good i like them the silver gold uh, mundorfs i know you said you replaced them with some supremes or something but yeah they were a huge upgrade for what was in there so i really appreciate that and again thanks to you folks that bring me your gear or send me your gear for me to review for me to upgrade and use for guinea pigs for projects on the channel and with that, I'll see you at the next Monday monologue.